Hey there, and welcome to the first retouch, section 5. In this section, we're going to be going over dodging and burning this image, as well as sharpening, and uh, we're going to be finishing up. It's going to be really, really fun. All right, let's go ahead and create a new layer. You can hit Shift, Option, Command, N. It'll create a new layer. It's a mouthful. Command G is going to group that with, its, it, with itself. Now we're going to change this layer blend mode from normal down to overlay, and we're going to be painting black and white on it. So when you paint black on this layer, there we go, it burns. And when you paint white, it dodges. And there we go. So you can see all that. We have a lot of potential, basically. We can go super dark or super light. So what we're gonna do is keep our flow about 20% and that's gonna allow us to kind of go kind of slowly when we do this. We don't need to be in like a huge rush. And basically what I'm doing is just painting over top of areas that I want to stand out a little bit more. Areas that look a little bit nicer, you know, like this flow of hair is pretty nice and you know that there, you know, it's, I don't need to draw much attention to that there. This little bit of hair is kind of nice there. I'm just basically looking to like add some more like shape and structure and interest into the hair. All right, maybe a little darker around the face where it kind of comes out of the... There we go. That's nice there. So I'm switching back between black and white. My left hand is on the X key on my keyboard. And when I want to paint a highlight, I just paint with white. And I want to paint a shadow, I paint with black. So um, X will switch back and forth between your foreground and background color. So I just keep my foreground color as white. And I hit X, you can see it just switches them around every time I hit X. So it allows me to dodge and burn pretty quickly, really, like pretty easily. All right, cool. Yeah, so we're just painting light over here, paint some dark. All right, that's, <laughs> you know, that's really, that's really all dodging and burning is, is painting light and dark. Um, I don't want to like downplay its like effectiveness because it really is a very powerful tool, but that's pretty much all it is, is painting light and then dark. All right, let's make our brush a little bit larger. All right, and go ahead and paint some lighter areas in here. Paint some darker areas in there. All right, so I'm just kind of like trying to pull out shape here in the hair you know it's not it's not anything that like i'm trying to force i'm just kind of going along with like the how the hair kind of naturally flows and seeing how i can make it as as interesting and pretty as possible all right let's paint a little bit around the face there all right there we go and you can see I'm just kind of like moving from one area of the image to another. It's just kind of moving around, seeing what it needs. And let me zoom out a little bit so I can get a good idea of how this looks like from a little bit farther away. That'll give me a good idea of like where I should leave dark. So like, for instance, like this area here, like I could leave this all light, but it's kind of like, it's not really that nice. So by painting this dark, it pulls any attention away from it, and then I can just pull attention, you know, towards other areas of the photo. This totally, I mean, <laughs> this amount of hair is like, whoa, did you Photoshop that on there? And it's like, no, this is totally real. She, she really does have that much hair, um, which is pretty cool. All right, there we go. Again, just kind of painting on here dark where we don't want any detail and light where we do. All right, so let's turn this layer off and back on. We can see how much it does to really define the shape of the hair. It's really, really nice. Let's do a new layer. We're gonna do um, some clothing here, We're dodging and burning the clothes. We'll just, oops, <laughs> change the background color on accident. This down here can be a little bit darker, no prob. All right. I don't need attention to be down here, right? So by 
darkening that area down there, it draws attention back up to the subject. All right, and let's be sure to change this layer from normal to overlay there. All right, soft light will also work. If you want an effect that's a little bit more subtle, try soft light. All right, and you know what? That looks good. Let's just lower the opacity a little bit on that. There we go. Okay, cool. The next layer, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to change this from normal to overlay. And I'm going to start carving out some cheekbones. We're just going to paint like right in here with a large soft edge black brush. Again, we're at a really low flow, a flow of about 10%. I don't need a lot of ink down here to make the effect I'm looking for. I like, you know, barely anything is what I'm looking for. All right, there we go. Lighten up under the eyes. Bottom of the chin. Go ahead and make this area a little bit darker here. I'm gonna make her hand a little bit darker so it doesn't compete as much with her face. So I'm painting black on this layer mask. Or sorry, there's no layer mask here. I'm just painting black on this layer. All right, and we'll just lower the opacity of this layer a little bit too. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's name our layer DB for dodge and burn and see the before and the after. And I gotta say, that looks really, really great. I'm just gonna lower the opacity because I, <laughs> I really do have a tendency to overdo things. Um, so every time I do something like that, just lowering the opacity is like, it's a good way to check just to make sure you're not like <laughs> going crazy overboard with your photos. Okay, great. And let's go ahead and close this down. We'll create a new layer, group this with itself, and we'll call this sharpen. Guys, we're almost done. Super excited. All right, now with this layer, I'm going to create a stamp visible. So shot, shift, option, command E as an elephant is gonna make our stamp visible layer. And this is just a copy of everything you see. We've done plenty of stamp visible layers before. We're gonna use this for sharpening. So I'm gonna change this from normal. We're gonna go down to overlay. I'm gonna desaturate this so it doesn't mess up my colors when I do the high pass. So I'm gonna to go to image, adjustments, desaturate. Okay, and then I'm gonna create a couple copies. So I'm gonna hit command J a couple times. Three is probably good. And I'll do different amounts of high pass on each of these layers, okay? So this layer, we're going to go to filter, down here to other, and over to high pass. All right, and now, basically I'm gonna choose a radius that works for sharpening my image. So we'll try something like five to start with, okay? That looks pretty good. Now this next one, see that was our radius of five? This layer five copy, I'm gonna run a high pass on this, and we're gonna go with a radius of 10. All right, and this one, let's try it with a radius of 15. So we can see that like, that's probably overboard, especially when you combine it with these other ones, but the trick here is finding the balance where they all look good. So this looks pretty good, like pretty much everywhere. Um, I still don't need it to be visible like down here in the hair and the fingers. I don't need any attention to be brought there. So we're going to put a black layer mask on that and then I'm going to paint white on my layer mask just right around this area which is the main focal point of, of the image, right? So let's bring up some attention there. Next we have this layer which is brings a lot more sharpening. Now let's go ahead and bring the opacity down on that just a little bit. We'll put a black layer mask on that, and then we'll just paint white on the layer mask over top of her eyes and her eyebrows and her lips, because that's where we're like, yeah, please look here. And some of these freckles, because they are like pretty nice freckles, actually. All right. There we go. So it's like, whoa, look at my eyes. Um, yeah, and then this one is even more intense. So we'll just choose very special places for this one. 
So let's put a black layer mask on there. All right, and you know what? I wanna actually bring some of these freckle details out. Like, I, I think it's gonna really look nice if we do, especially around this area here. All right, so I'm just painting white in these areas, which is kind of bringing out even more detail. All right, cool. So there's the sharpen on and off. Look at all that detail. Um, you know what, I, I like this freckle detail so much that I'm gonna create a new layer. Um, we're gonna use my clone stamp tool, sampling current and below, and I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and get any of these freckles in other places. So let's change our layer blend mode from normal down to darken. And then I only want the freckles on this layer, right? So let's just double click here and I'm gonna say, don't be visible where this layer is lighter, just where it's darker. All right, and then I should have basically just freckles on a layer that I can then kind of play with. Let's lower the opacity of that. All right, we're gonna flip that horizontally and You know what? I don't really like that. <laughs> Never mind. I don't like it. Um, all right, let's try it one more time. As for the clone stamp tool, we're going to sample this over here and we're going to paint in just a little bit. All right. Just want to duplicate some of these freckles in. All right, and we'll change this from normal down to darken. Yeah, that looks really incredible. I totally dig that. All right, let's look at the before and the after with that. Wow, looks really, really good. I don't know if I'm sold. I think let's just go ahead and delete that. You know what? That's where Freckles' natural pattern is. Let's just say, um, let's just leave it how it is naturally. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's right click and go to select custom color. I'm on the backdrop here and hit OK. I went all the way to white, by the way. So I went select custom color, all the way to white, hit OK. And then it changes my background color to white. So now I know if I'm going to put this on a white background, you can see it's actually a little bit gray. So we're gonna grab an adjustment layer and I'm gonna to go to levels and I'm gonna grab my whites and just kind of crank them up a little bit here. There we go. So now everything is just a bit brighter. And I'm just gonna hit Command I on that layer mask to make it invisible and then paint this white around the edges. Cause I, I wanna make sure that like if I put this on a, let's say I put this on a web page or I print it out, I wanna make sure that it is all the way white, especially around the edges. So yeah, I want this to disappear into my image. All right, and then I can bring some of that light color onto the face of my subject as well. All right, and into her eyes. Beautiful, and there we have our image on a completely white background. Look at that. I'm gonna hit um, F for full screen. Right click, we'll go to select custom color in this view too. And then I'm gonna hit command zero. And that's gonna bring it to uh, full screen there. Wow, that's really, really gorgeous. All right guys, that is the end of our first complete retouch. What a cool, cool image. Let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. All right, so here is our, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, by the way, and click on this eyeball. So here's our portable. Again, the before, still pretty dang nice, but the after is just something else. Amazing. Guys, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I'm gonna really enjoy teaching you the next sections as well. <laughs> All right, stick around. We got a couple more complete edits to go. Thanks so much, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.